Hi, ah, you are welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to look at friction. So what is friction? Friction is that force that opposes the relative motion between two surfaces in contact with each other. We say we have two surfaces. This is a block. This is the ground surface. If you bring the two close to each other, see, they have a contact with each other like this, and you tend to push this block of stone toward this direction. Okay? Because they have contact with each other, there will be an opposition to the movement or the motion of this stone. That Opposition is coming backward while you are going like this. Otherwise, you will see this going smoothly without any resistance. Just like you are standing on top of ice. That is, you are on top of ice. The surface of ice is very slippery. It means that what? The friction on top of ice is very low. The friction between the road and the tire, you agree with me, is I. That is why our vehicle did not slip around on the road. Unless your vehicle is on the ice surface. So, it is friction that is responsible for me to stand a red like this. Okay? It is friction that is enabling you to sit down on that chair. Otherwise, you will slip away from the chair. And so on and so forth. Okay? Friction, friction, friction. Now that you understand friction, the next thing you should understand is the formula of friction. How to calculate friction. And before you know that, let's draw. Say this is a surface, horizontal surface. And this is a block of stone. The first thing is, this block has a weight. The weight is in this direction. Whenever there is a force, there's always a reaction. You exerted weight on this surface, Mr. Block. The surface will exert force on you. That is reaction. We call that normal reaction. Okay? I want to go like this. This is the direction of motion. But there is an opposition. That is the friction. Now we have everything. What you should put at the back of your mind is this. It is easy to calculate this by just measuring it. Put it on what? On a weight measurement. You can get the weight. It needs to get the weight. It's not a problem. And if you get the weight, the weight is equal to the normal reaction. It means W is equal to R. Or R is equal to W. Okay? Now, how do we get this frictional force? Before you can think of getting the frictional force, you must represent the friction between two surfaces. We call that coefficient of friction. That is, the friction between these two fingers is different from the friction between my feet and the ground surface. If I move to an eye surface, the friction is different. How do you represent these fissures. We represent it by what the coefficient of friction. And this is represented by this. This is what coefficient of friction. If we put S here, we say coefficient of static friction. Okay? Is constant for different surfaces. It depends on what you are calculating for. Now, the coefficient of friction is the frictional force over normal reaction. From here, you can get every other thing. You can get F to be this multiplied by this. You can get this to be this over this. Okay? So, you should know all these formulas. Another thing you should know is this. This is on the horizontal surface. Okay? What if... We have an inclined surface. 
say this is the angle of inclination, theta. I will pull the same object. You agree with me, this object will tend to go down. That is the direction of motion. As this object wants to go down, there will be an opposition. That is the friction. So the direction of the friction is like this. What about the weight? The weight is always vertical. Irrespective of how you look at it, it's vertical. Coming down. This is the weight. What about normal reaction? Normal reaction is the force exerted on a body by the surface is what is resting on. This is resting on this surface. The normal reaction is perpendicular. It's like this. It's perpendicular to this surface. That is 90 degrees with the surface. Just like this one, 90 degrees. Okay? So, this is the direction of what? The normal reaction. But to get normal reaction, we must get equivalent weight in this direction. This weight is not in this direction. The weight is here. So, we need to get the component of this weight in this direction. Unless you get the component of the weight in this direction, you are wasting your time. So, therefore, we need to transfer this here, theta, to get this side. Let's call this side x. So I am going to get a line that is parallel to this, that is parallel. Let's say this line is that line that is parallel to it, okay? So I am going to call it y. To get this side, you agree with me, this is I just said, this is hypotenuse. What is that telling you? It's cosine, cos theta, okay, let me put it here. Cos theta is equal to s over w. So s therefore is w cos theta. Okay? Another thing. To get y, you agree with me, is opposite and hypotenuse. So, you agree with me, I will come here to say sine theta is equal to opposite y over this. y therefore is w sine theta. So, what have you learned so far now? We now know the component of weight in the direction, the component of this weight in this direction because this one you got is also in this direction what is this this is actually this the way you saw it here is the same thing with this okay if this is in this direction it means you can put this sign that is this that is y sine theta that is w sine theta. Okay? Now, you agree with me that this S is W cos theta. So, this normal reaction is equal to this. Equals to what? W cos theta. Okay? Why this is equal to this? Remember, this is going like this. This is opposite. The way we say that this is equal to this. Okay? This is equal to this. Also, this is equal to this. I can say W sine theta is equal to F, which is equal to this. Y R is equal to this. Hope you understand the way we are doing it. Opposite, opposite. They are equal, they are equal, equal, equal. So, it means therefore you can come here now to say this is equal to W sine theta. That is, this is equal to this. That is, this is equal to this. Okay? If we already know that this is equal to F over R, what is F? F is equal to this. So I can put here now W sine theta. What about R? R is equal to this. W cos theta. W cos theta. Okay? It means this and this will cancel. What is the meaning of sine over cosine? That is tan. It means we can call this tan theta. What is the purpose of all these many things? It's because sometimes you might be given only theta, you need to find the coefficient of friction. Sometimes you can be given W and R, you are asked to find the coefficient of friction or you are asked to find friction when the other ones are given to you. By understanding all these equations, all these formulas, then you are empowering yourself or 
putting yourself in a very good position to answer any question that will be given to you in friction. With this info, you are prepared to answer questions. So let's go ahead now and start answering different questions, okay? Let's look at this question. It says, calculate the coefficient of friction if a woody block of mass 1.6 kg rests on a rough horizontal surface and the limited frictional force between the block and the surface is 8 Newton. And G is equal to this. G is given to us. We are asked to find this. Friction is given to be 8 Newton. Okay? The mass is given to us to be 1.6 kg. If this is the rough surface, we have this here. The weight is like this. That means weight is equal to mg. Remember, weight is mg. What is mass? Mass is given to us to be 1.6 multiplied by 10. Because 10 is given to us here. This and this. Okay? If you multiply this, you're going to have 16 newton. Remember, this weight is equal to the normal reaction. So this is also 16 newton. We are told that the frictional force is this. Say this is the friction direction is 8 newton. What is this we are looking for? This is F over R. What is F? F is 8. Y R is 16. You agree with me? This is in newton, this is in newton. Here, one, here, two. That is this and this we also cancel. Newton and Newton we cancel. We have 1 over 2, which is 0.5. As you can see, we don't have any unit for this coefficient of friction because Newton cancel Newton. That's what we call the coefficient of friction as dimensionless. It has no dimension. Dimensionless. Less. Okay? Hope you understand this. Let's look at this. It says what? Calculate the magnitude of the force required to move a 20 kg object along horizontal surface. Remember there are two surfaces, horizontal or inclined. So what you use for horizontal is different from what? Inclined. This is the object. The mass of the object is this, that is 20 kg. The weight now is always equals to mg. We are given this. It means here we're going to get 20 multiplied by 10 to have 200. Okay? That is mass 20 multiplied by acceleration due to gravity. We have this in Newton. One thing you must put at the back of your mind, the weight is always equal to normal reaction. It means here now we have 200 Newton. Okay? We are given the coefficient of friction to be 0 0.2. Remember it has no unit. Now we are asked to calculate what? The magnitude of force required to just move. To just move is you are trying to move it is very heavy as you are about to move it. That one nano pico seconds before it moves. That is where you calculate the frictional force, the, the maximum frictional force to overcome before you move it. So is that maximum Frictional force that is equal to the force required to just move it. So, if this is my direction of movement, this is the frictional force, they have to be equal. What is required to start moving it is equal to the frictional force. So, so frictional force, you agree with me, is equal to this multiplied by normal reaction. We have this to be 0.2, we have this to be 200. You agree with me, if you multiply this, you're going to have 40 Newton. So 40 Newton is the answer for this question. Let's look at this question. It says, if an object begins to slide on a surface inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal, what is the coefficient of friction? Where what? The acceleration due to gravity is given to be what? 10 meter per second square. Inclined surface, an object, the angle is 30 degree. To just move, to just move is equal to the frictional force. To just move is equal to the maximum frictional force. We are asked to calculate what? The coefficient of friction. Coefficient of friction. Remember, we've done many things when it comes to this. How do we resolve this? This 
is equal to f over r. Okay? As you can see, to get r, we should know the weight. To get weight, we should know the mass. Nothing is given to us. You see, when I started this class, I told us in this place, what was the purpose of all this? Is for you to have a picture so that you don't say, ah, this is not given to me, this is not given to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. As you can see, we have done that already. That even using only the angle, you can get the coefficient of friction without the mass, without anything. So it means, therefore, we can see here now, instead of following this, it's tan theta. Okay? So now that we have only the angle, we put 30 degrees here. What is tan 30 degree? If you use your special angles, this is 30, this is 1, this is 2. What is here? Here is square root of 3. So here now, tan is opposite over adjacent. That is 1 over square root of 3. Okay? So this is the answer. Let's look at this. A horizontal force of 45 newton applied to a crate of mass 9 kg is just sufficient to move it. If the crate is now pulled at an angle of 50 degrees to the horizontal, find the force required to move the crate over the horizontal surface. G is equal to 10 meter per second square. Now, first of all, let's draw it. This is the crate. Okay. We are given this to be 9 kg. So weight now is mg, which is 9 multiplied by 10 because this is given to us to be 10. That is 19 newton. Here, the normal reaction is equal to also this, equals to the weight, equals to 90 newton. Okay? But here you can see that the coefficient of friction was not given to us. But we are told that this is what you just needed to start the movement of this. That is what? The frictional force. Because the force that is required to just move it is equal to the frictional force. Because if you apply the force toward the direction, we are saying is 45 Newton. To just move it is equal to the frictional force. So this is equal to this. So F is equal to 45 Newton. Okay? Now that we know this, we know this 45 new thing. What we should do now is to find the coefficient of friction that was not given to us. The coefficient of friction that was not given to us is F over R. Are you agree with me? To get F, we already know F. And we also know the normal reaction to be 90. Here is 1, here is 2, that is 0.5. So the coefficient of friction here is 0.5. Okay? 0.5. Now, these are the basic information. Basic information. Now, something happened. If the crate is now pulled, now pulled, before now, this is what we know about this. Again, if it's now pulled at an angle 50 degree to the horizontal, it means we have to draw another one. That is to say, the same thing we drew before, but this time, instead of this horizontal pull, it was pulled here. So we are going to say this is what? 50 degree. The force is now in this direction. And we are not given the force. We can't put anything for the force. Let's say because we have already used, because it's pull, let's just put P here, okay? Now, remember, that this is still here, this is still here, this is still here. But the point is that instead of pushing horizontal, you pull it at 50 degrees to the horizontal. Whenever you are given anything, at angle to anything, to be successful with that question, make sure you get the component of the force in the horizontal direction, that is in S axis and in Y axis. You have to what resolve that, the component of this force, both in S and Y axis. So what is the component of this in this direction? 
The component of this in this direction is cosine. Put that at the back of your mind. No need to start showing you all that. It's P cos theta in this direction. Is the direction is P sine theta. Because if I come here now, this opposite over hypotenuse, sine, right? This is adjacent over hypotenuse, cosine. That is the reason, okay? I believe you understand this because we have actually done this in the beginning of this class where we are looking at inclined plane. But this is not inclined plane. This is a force at an angle. Pulley, an object we knew about. Now, a new dimension to the question. Now, the way we said R is equal to this, we can't do that again. Because the only one that was going downward was W. The one that was going upward was R. They are equal. But now, it is a new thing entirely. The one that is going up now is not just R, it's R at P sine theta. So we are going to say these two are equal to this. That is to say, W now is equal to R plus P sine theta. Okay, call this one equation one. For a reason, because we don't know P. We don't know R now. But we know W. W will remain the same because mass will remain the same. Mass will not change. Acceleration due to gravity will not change, irrespective of how you drag this object. So we can use the same value here. By saying here is 90 equals to R plus P sine theta. Okay? Now, the only force that is going on the horizontal direction in this direction is this. Why? This one is F. Therefore, we can say this F is equal to P cos theta, okay? Now, what is the value of F? Some students will mistakenly say the value of F is the same with this. You can't do that. Because the thing has changed. The thing has changed. S was when, if you want to push it horizontally, now it's pulled. You can't say that again. You have to calculate new value of F. Remember, we put this one, that is the weight, to be the same because weight cannot change irrespective of how you drag it. But the force changes because we are now applying it at an angle instead of horizontal. So the new value for this now is going to be like this. We are replacing it afresh. Coefficient of friction multiplied by R. What is coefficient of friction is 0.5. Coefficient of friction will remain the same. No changes the same two surfaces. So it's 0.5 R equals to P cos theta. All we have to do, we call this one equation two. Okay, now let's continue. All we have to do now is to bring out the two equations. This is 90, that is this, equals to this plus this sine 50. Okay, what is 0.5 R equals to P cos 50, okay? We are looking for P, right? So let's make R the subject of formula so that we can find P. So R here is equals to P cos 50 all over 0.5, okay? What is cos 50? P 0 0.643 all over 0.5. If we work this out now, we're going to have 1286p. Okay, now all we need to do, we go back to this equation, we substitute this there in place of this, then we put this down. Sine 50. Okay, what is this? Sine 50. This will give us. 0.766p, okay? We bring out p, say 1.686 plus 0.766. We add this, this is 2.052. So now p here now is equal to 90 over 2.052. That is 43.86. In Newton, approximate. This is the answer. This. Let's look at this. It says an object of mass 50 kg is at the point of sliding down 
a plane inclined at 36 degree to the horizontal. Find the least force parallel to the plane required to make the object to begin to move up the plane. Okay? So this is the plane. This is the object. Okay? This is the angle of inclination. That is 36 degree. The weight is coming down because to this mg 50 kg multiplied by 10 which is equals to 150 newton okay now we need to get a component of this weight in this direction and this direction okay the component we know for this is w cos theta which is 36 degree and that is equals to the normal reaction which is w cos theta which is 36 i mean 36 degree this one is w sine theta we have treated all this okay which you can write as w sine 36 degree okay now we want to pull it up why you are pulling it up pull up as it's about to go up whatever force it is is equal to all the force going toward the direction the question is that what are the forces going toward the direction there are two one as you are going up frictional force remember before now we said when the body is sliding down as it's coming to this side frictional force will be going like this but this time, we want to pull it up. We are applying force to pull it up. The friction will change side and come to this side. So, the friction will be toward this side. Remember, this one is different from friction. This, you are seeing here, is the component of this weight in this direction. It means for me to pull this guy up, I need to overcome these two forces. That is to say, P equals to F plus sine 36 degree. But what is frictional force? Remember, it's like this. So what is R? Normal reaction. W cos 36. Okay, we are looking for P. So now, to continue, we don't know the coefficient of friction. What is the coefficient of friction when it comes to this? Remember I told us, simply use tan theta. We have established that. Tan theta, that is tan 36. What is tan 36? That is 0.73. Okay, so now we come here to say this is equals to 0.73 times 150 for W times cos 36 plus 150 times sine 36. This is equal to 0.73 times 150 times cos 36 is 0 0.8091. One, this sine 36 is 0 0.5. Eight, eight. If you add all this together, you're going to have 176.786. Can I presume it as 79 in Newton? So, this is the force required to pull it up. Okay? The force needed to pull this up. Let's look at this. It says a body of mass 25 kg moving at 3 meters per second on a rough horizontal floor is brought to rest after sliding through a distance of 2.50 meters on the floor. Calculate the coefficient of sliding friction if g is equal to 10 meters per second square. Okay? This horizontal is sliding. The speed at which it was moving was 3 meters per second. When you push it, allow it to come to rest. First of all, we are given the mass, 25 kg, 
this is velocity. Remember, it's coming to rest. It's a final velocity now. So we're going to call this initial velocity because there's something they gave us as coming to rest, which is zero meter per second, okay? When it comes to rest, okay? On the raw surface, and the distance was given to us to be, that is S, small letter X distance is given to be 2.5 meter, okay? And uh, what is the other information? G is also given to be 10 meter per second square, okay? We are asked to find the coefficient of friction. Now, how do we go about this kind of question? This is the surface, okay? This is the object moving and it cover a distance of this before it came to rest, okay? We know that what? This equals to F over R, okay? Now, what is F? F is a frictional force. The way we have been calculating FCs is to use the coefficient of friction and normal reaction. The force that is required to push it to start is equal to the frictional force. It is not given out. How do you do it? You have to remember that F is equal to MA, mass plus acceleration. We know the mass to be 25. We don't know acceleration. We need to calculate acceleration. With the information given to us, we can apply this formula. But because we have it coming to rest, it means it was decelerating before it came to rest. It means therefore here, we have to introduce minus 2as. Final velocity is zero. This initial is three. 2a, we don't know a, that's why we are here. S is 2.5. Now, this to this side, we say, this is nine, that is nine. Then we divide by the remaining one, two times 2.5, which equals to nine over five. And if you divide this, you're gonna have 1.8 meter per second square, okay? Now that we have this, we can come back here and I'll put it, that is 1.8, meter per second square. If we multiply this now, we're going to have 45 Newton. Okay? So now, we come here now to put 45 Newton over normal reaction. What is normal reaction? Normal reaction is a reaction as a result of the weight. We said they are always equal. So what is the weight? So the weight is equal to normal reaction in this context. So the weight, you agree with me, is mg which is 25 multiplied by 10, which is 250. So we're gonna put 250 in this place. When you divide this, I'm gonna have 0 0.18. Let's look at this. It says, a body of masses per zero kg rests on a rough horizontal surface where the coefficient of friction of static friction is 0.25. Determine the magnitude of the limiting frictional force. If G is equal to 10 meter per second square. Um, now, let's draw the diagram. We have this, we have this, okay? We know the mass to be 6 kg, okay? On the rough surface, okay, the coefficient of friction is given to us to be 0 0.25. Determine the magnitude of the limiting frictional force. That is, if we are going towards this direction, this is what they are asking us to find, the limiting frictional force, okay? We know the weight now, because that is given to us. Weight is equal to mg. What is m? m is 6, g is 10, 60 mu t, okay? That is done. We must also calculate this. That is normal reaction. How do you get normal reaction? Normal reaction is equal to the weight when it comes to horizontal plane like this without any pulling. So we are going to say this is like this. It therefore me to get F now. We know that this is equal to F over this. 0.5 equals to F we are looking for all over 60. F therefore is 60 multiplied by 
that is 6 times 2.5, which is equals to 15 Newton. Okay, hope you understand this. Let's look at this. It says, a metal block of mass 7.5 kg lies on a rough horizontal platform. If a horizontal force of 12 Newton applied to the block through a set of mass, just slide the block, calculate the coefficient of limited friction between the block and the platform. So this is, this and this is the body, okay? The mass is 7.5 kg. On the rough surface, a horizontal force of this is applied to this to the center of gravity. Let me just remove this mass for now. I put the mass here to be seven point. We apply a force here. Let's say we pull it toward the side. Okay. So the friction will be on this other side. Okay. So the, the force we are applying is 12 Newton. Okay. You agree with me that this is the weight. This is the normal reaction. Normal reaction is always equal to weight. And you agree with me that weight is mg. What is m? m is 7.5 multiplied by 10, which is the g, equals to 75 newton. That is the weight, okay? We are asked to calculate the coefficient of friction, which is always this, okay? What is the friction? The frictional force, remember they said, this is applied to the block through the center of mass d just to slide it just to slide it means that what just is equals to the frictional force that is this and this are equal it means f is 12 also normal reaction and this are equal that is 75 if we divide this now you're going to have 0 0.16 okay so that is the answer the coefficient of friction let's look at this it says Two bodies, S hour, S hour, of masses 5 kg and 7.5 kg respectively are connected by a light inextensible string as illustrated in the diagram below. S is placed on a rough surface, rough surface. This is a rough surface, okay? All this rough surface, rough surface of coefficient of friction 0.5, okay? Calculate the magnitude of the one. Normal reaction on S, two, frictional force between S and the surface, and the tension on the string, okay? The first one said normal reaction of X. You agree with me for anything like this, when there is weight on the surface, on this surface, this is a Apply weight on it. There is always a reaction. They are always equal. And weight is equal to mg. What is m? m is given to us here to be 5. And you agree with me that g is constant is 10, which is 50 newton. You might ask me why you say g is 10. We assume it's 10. Although it's not given to us, we assume here it's 10. Okay? Normally, they will give it to you. Now, we cannot say that the normal reaction is also 15 Newton. So now, we answer the first question. The second question says, the frictional force between S and the surface. Between this X and the surface. Okay, now let's get the frictional force. The second one, the frictional force is equal to this. What is the coefficient of friction? It was given to be 0.5. We now know the normal reaction to be 50. If we multiply this to what are you going to get? You're going to get 25. That is 25 Newton. That is 2. The frictional force between S and the surface is 25 Newton. Finally, we need to calculate the tension. Very important question, the tension on the string. 
So we're going to call the tension on this string. That is, the tension is the force that is pulling this string like this. Let's look at this for now. For x, we are going to say for x, for x, if you are pulling this, there is an opposition. Remember that this is moving now. It's moving. For E to move, we say M is equal to MA, right? So the movement is MA. Mass times acceleration. It's accelerating. A body accelerating, moving. But what is making it to move? It's supposed to be F, which is T. But we cannot say T now. Because it's not the entire tension that is pulling it. As the tension is pulling it, there is something being removed from the tension. Who is removing it? It is the friction. So we're going to say it is T minus the friction that is removing it. So T now minus what is the friction? The friction we got here to be 25. Is this 25 we are talking about? Minus 25 equals to MA. We already know mass. Mass is what? Here is 5 times A. What is A? We don't know A because A is not given to us yet or it's not given to us at all. Let's put it like this. So we're going to leave it like this. Let's call this one equation 1. Next now is to look at the tension here. What is bringing you down is the mass of this body be pulled down by the force of gravity. Okay, is mg that is applied on this. So the force that is that you are seeing here, this particular one, is the weight of this body. Mg, the weight of this body. So the weight of this body, mg, is what is pulling this body down. And it is coming down. There is a reaction backward, which is a tension on this rope. So, even this rope, there is force that is what? Taking it down. That is the force you are seeing here. This is being applied to pull this rope down. This rope, this is the rope. This force here, that is the weight. is pulling it. It's pulling it. That is this direction. Pulling it. Okay? Why this other guy here? This other guy, the resistor that is here, that is Dragging this guy little by little, that's refusing this guy to go forward is also on this rope, taking it up. So, what you must recognize first to understand it is to know that this guy now is in acceleration, it's moving, for instance. Okay, we are going to say because it's moving a little. Okay, so we say it's MA. The way we recognize this MA, MA is for you that you are moving. Okay. What's supposed to make you move is mg. That is, the weight of the body is what is pulling you, mg, to be equal to this. We cannot just say weight is equal to this because there's something opposing it. Out of the entire weight on this rope, pulling it down, there is an opposition that is on this body that is dragging the rope backward. Two forces on this rope. So we need to remove the one that is dragging it backward. Just the way we remove this frictional force, we have to also remove from this W. Okay? So that one that is going up now, the one that is going up, as you can see, is T. So we say minus T equals to this. Don't know if you understand what we are doing. So now we know that this is Mg. The weight minus the tension Ma. Okay? So now... You agree with me, this weight is 7.5 multiplied by G, which is 10, minus T, equals to M again, 7.5 A. We don't know A. This is 75 minus T, equals to 7.5 A. What are we actually looking for? The tension. So now we have A here, we have A here. So what we are going to do for this one now, let's... See if we can bring out A from here. I can now say here now, T minus 25 over 5 is equal to A. I will keep this, I will use this now, I put it in place of A here. To say 75 minus T equals to 7.5 multiplied by this. That is in place of A now, T minus 25 over 5. 
Okay, I can now work for t. So that is to say here, I'm going to say multiply throughout by 5. This is 12.5t. 3.75 plus, okay, that is 5.6. 2.5 t is equals to 5, 6, 2.5 over 12.5. At the end of the day, going to have 45 newton. Okay? 45 newton. So, as you can see, all the answers are well sort out. Let's look at this. It says, a movie car of mass 800 kg experiences a frictional force of 200 newton. This, say, is the road. Say, this is the car. These are the tires of the car. For instance, say, we draw it like this. Just a rough diagram of the car. Whatever car, we don't know. Say, this is the car. Now, say for a standard, this car, this is the person driving it, whatever, okay? And it's going towards this direction. We are pulling it to the side. But there are frictional forces. If you calculate all of them, it's opposing the movement. And we said what is 200 Newton. You need to overcome this before you can go forward. But the issue now is this. To even make this move, it's not about friction. This guy has his own mass. To make that mass move, to recognize that we say it's MA. Okay? This MA is mass times acceleration. That is when it starts moving. We need F to be equal to this. We call this one the resultant force applied on the body that can make it move without considering the what? The friction. It means for this guy to go like this, I first of all need this. That is this F. I also need this. Because two of them are coming together before I can pull all of them. Because I need to first of all oppose 200 Newton. The friction. Then, apply a resultant force on the body. If there was no friction here, I don't need this 200. I simply say MA. But now, there is friction. I must add it together. It means everything that I need to pull it to the side is this MA and the friction. Okay? So, therefore, we can solve this to be, what is M? M is 800. Acceleration is 2. Friction is 200. Okay, this is 1600 zero zero plus 200. That is 1800 Newton. Let's look at this. It says a block of wood of mass 5 kg is pulled on a platform by a force of 40 Newton as illustrated in the diagram above. If the frictional force F experienced by the block is 12 Newton, Calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the block. We are pulling it like this. This is what we are using to pull it. We are apply 40 Newton to pull it. Remember, there are two things you need to overcome for it to start moving. That is MA. So we need the MA. We also need the friction. So to get this, to pull it, we need to recognize the friction and MA. Okay? But we are looking for what? Calculate the magnitude of the acceleration. We are looking for the acceleration. We know the friction to be what? The frictional force is 12 Newton. We know the mass to be 5. We don't know A. We pull it with 40. So this comes here to be 40 minus 12 equals to 5A. This will give us 28 equals to 5A. A therefore is 28 over 5. And if you divide this, now I'm going to have 
in meter per second square. That is all. 